Hey, how's it going, everybody? Um, today's uh, January the seventh. This week, I took my CCMP switch exam or the 300-115 exam, and now I just need to take my troubleshooting exam. I just want exam away from my certification. Um, so, if you remember, on the last video, we did a clean installation of an ESXi host. And today, um, we're going to be talking about some of the basic concepts like well, the virtual switches, or well, the port groups, some of the security modes. Also, I would like to, uh, we're going we're gonna to integrate our ESXi with a GNS3 topology. We're going to be doing that and then uh, we'll set up a span session or a switch port analyzer session and um, span sessions that's one of the topics in the switching exam and what uh, what the span does that replicates you basically you go and define uh, a source port and a destination port and what it does is that it replicates the traffic in the, in the source port to the destination port pretty straightforward so if you if we go over here this is my ESXi host and on the configuration tab and then go to networking these are virtual switches <coughs> so a virtual switch is very much like a regular physical switch the way that they also have MAC address tables they they also strip off the MAC address as a relayer 2 hop we, we all know that um, the virtual switches they their default is 56 ports they come with 56 ports as default and they go up, they can go up to 4088 ports wow um let's see the physical adapter connected to it is always going to be on the right side that's called an uplink port and a virtual switch with two or more uplink ports that's called a teamed v switch and uh, as you can imagine that's good for that provides fault tolerance and load balancing um let's see so um, virtual switches, and this comes straight from VMware. There's no way to uh, there's no way to directly connect two virtual switches together, and that's a good thing. That means we don't need spanning tree protocol, we don't need virtual trunking protocol. And so let me try and draw this out for you. So okay. So you remember. I have. Uh, I'm gonna try and show you how what I got going on here. And this is my. This is my 3560 switch. And I have a, a trunk link connecting to my 2821 router. And then I have two access ports. One sitting on VLAN 10, another one on VLAN 100. And over here, I have my ESXi. Okay. And let's see, so if you see here, this V3 zero will be up here. This uh, V3 zero, and over here we will have the V3 one. Okay, so that's good. So that's uh, that's what we got here. This is the this is the uh, physical adapter, of the NIC connecting to access port 10, and over here this is the one connecting to the access port in VLAN 100. So that's good. Um, let's see. Okay. So after we go over this, then we're gonna have uh, what we what we're gonna do is that we're gonna set up a GNS3 topology, and that will be let's just put it over here and we're gonna use we're gonna bridge um, we're gonna use this adapter here and bridge it to a cloud here in the GNS3 and then we're gonna we're gonna put a, another router here uh, could be we probably gonna be using the 7200 and then we're gonna have uh, 3725 I believe with a um, ether switch module here and that's the one that we're gonna use for our span session so we're gonna have two ports in the ether switch module one connecting to each virtual machines in we're gonna use and we're gonna use virtualbox for that and 
that's more practical. So let's just um, what else I wanted to show you. Okay, so if we go over properties on the virtual switches and click here on edit, this is where we would define the number of ports for the switch. Uh, in the security tab, we have three modes or three options. We have promiscuous mode, and the promiscuous mode is something. What it does is that it retrieves the network traffic uh, on the on the physical adapter, and that's something that like, you would use for sniffing, for packet sniffing and troubleshooting. The MAC address changes. What it does is that it allows the virtual MAC address associated with the virtual machines to be changed. Okay? And the forged transmissions, um, it enables the virtual, mach the virtual machines to transmit net traffic. Even if the, even if the MAC address of the operating system that you have installed on the guest doesn't match the one on the VMX file and the VMX file is the one that holds the virtual machines configuration okay so here is here we have the traffic the traffic champion options and the nick teaming or the load balancing stuff okay so that's good and let's see all right, let me just bring up my GNS3 and just say cancel to this. Okay, so I have the uh, let's bring this cloud over here and I'm gonna use uh, 7200 and then this ether switch and Let's see, let me show you edit preference and the ether switch is just um thirty seven twenty five with a sixteen port ether switch module. That's all there is. So over here we're gonna configure this cloud to and here's where we will bridge it to the physical adapter and we're gonna bridge it to the LAN. That's my actual. Let me just show you that this LAN right here. It's the one sitting on my VLAN 10 access port. So that, there's that, and click add and OK. And then let's uh, attach these two together. So just remember, we're gonna we're gonna have to give this R1 and in the G slash zero zero slash zero interface an IP within the same VLAN 10 subnet, okay? And then we're gonna connect this to the fast unit one slash zero to over to this one, okay? And we're gonna bring two um, two virtual machines. So let me just show you real quick. So these two WinXP and WinXP2, these are two virtual machines that I have installed on a virtual box from Oracle. Uh, so this one, this one. And if we go over to settings and go to the network if you see I have the <coughs> the network adapters they're attached to they're, they're set up as not attached and that's the that's the way I want to have them because we're gonna be we're gonna be connecting them to some of the ports in the ether switch um, so let's just bring this up Okay. All right. So that looks fine. And what we're gonna do is that we're gonna um, we're gonna set uh, a static route going out to the internet on this R1, and it's gonna have the next top IP address of my of my 2821 router. So let's 
go ahead and start this apology. So this is one of the original machines. rename this session just so I don't forget what we're dealing with okay so let's go over to the interface 0 slash 0 and give it an IP actually I gotta check my DHCP people because I don't know what IP I have available to to give it um, so give me one second Alright, so let's just go ahead and give it IP address uh, 182.168.2.10.247 dot two, dot two and 245.255 and now shot. Okay, and on the we're gonna do 192.68.1 that um. One, two, four, five, two, five, two, five, zero, and no shot. Okay. Usual IP interface brief. Okay. And we should be able to ping our default gateway, and that's going to be the interface on the 2821 router, and that's the. Uh, okay. So that looks good. So now let's create the. Let's go ahead and create the the static, uh, the static route. So IP route. Oops, not here. IP route of uh, zero 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 and zero 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 one eighty two one sixty eight that ten dot one. Okay. And let's see what else. So let's try and give some IP addresses to the virtual machines. Well, in fact, we only have to give an IP address to one of the machines because uh, in a, in a, sp in a um, switchboard analyzer session, uh, like I like I said, you go and set up the session in a way that you define the in the source interface and the destination interface, and so the in the destination interface you plug in your packet sniffer application in this case again we're gonna be using the Wireshark so like in the destination interface you're gonna have your computer connected to it and you should see you should see uh, if you try and get it and grab an IP for a local DHCP server, you're not be, you're not gonna be able to because the destination interface is gonna be set as an inactive interface. And I'm gonna show this to you real quick. Uh, let's go over to this one, and that's S E S W one. Okay. Mhm. Mm All right. So let's just create a. Visual interface just so we can ping the R1 and make sure that we have everything working the way that it should. Mm, interface VLAN 1 and give it an IP address of 192.168. That we said 1 over here, right? Yes, so 1.2. Okay, and we should be able to ping 192.168.1.1. No, 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 yeah. Okay, so that's good. And let's go ahead and create the span session. So for that, we exit out of here and go to 
monitor session and this is the, the number of the session um, and then we create we assign the source interface and it's gonna be interface uh, actually let me see which one of the virtual machines has the <coughs> Wireshark install because I don't remember Okay, so this is the one. So this is uh, this one's gonna be our. This one's this one's gonna be the one sitting on the destination port. Okay, and oops, and that was the XP two. Okay, so the source interface is gonna be fastian a one slash one. And again, the monitor session, and it's gotta be the same session number one, um, destination interface, and it's gonna be F1 slash 2. And here we could, uh, let's see, not on this one. And the source, we could specify if we wanna. If we want to have both ways of the of the traffic, like the transmission and the 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 received traffic or the transmitted traffic. All right, so that's done. Now let's try and give an IP address to the WinXP virtual machine. Oh, I already have one. Cool. Okay, so we should be able to ping the. Or actually. Or actually, you know what? Instead of um, because if we did this uh, in order to in order for the in order for the WinX to be virtual machine to go out to the internet, the we would need to have c because we already have a, a static route going out. We would need a, a static route coming in. On my 2821, and I don't want to do that. I have my 2821 running G EIGRP and EHRP process, uh, the routing protocol. So let's just go ahead and um, let's go ahead and create a neighborship with, between these two. Not this one, R1. Okay, so IP EIGRP, oops, router EIGRP, and one, and no auto. And network 192.168.10.0.255.255.255.0. Not not that we need it. Um, network 192.168.1.0. Okay, and that's our adjacency coming up right there. So if we do uh, show IP route, we should have all these um, all these routes in the table. Okay, so that's good. Now, WinXP should be able to ping out to Google DNS server. Or not. Hmm. Let's see what's going on here. Oh, oh, no wonder. Let's see. Uh, yeah, that's this is not right. Um, so one three and ninety two sixty eight dot one dot one. Okay. So that should do it. Okay, so we have full visibility. 
Um, so now let's go over to XP number two. And let's go here. Now the local area network, I mean local connection number two should be the one reach it to the Ethernet zero interface. It should be this one. And then what you're gonna notice is that we're not gonna give uh oh actually I forgot to show you the let's see. Um and it's the F one slash two do show interface switchboard. Show interface. Okay. Hmm, not here. So show interface status. Not here either. Well, I guess it's an issue about this being an ether switch and not a not an actual switch. But we should be able, like when we issue this command right here, um, show interface status. We should see that the fast DNA one slash two should be as an um, the status would be. Uh, I don't quite remember. Monetary. It should be set up as a monitoring status because it's part of a, it's a destination interface in a span session that's why so if we minimize this and so we're gonna notice that it's not gonna it's gonna it's not gonna grab a, a local IP from the DHCP server and that's fine we are gonna end up getting a, one of the popular 169.254 IP the all the everything went wrong IP huh, so and that's fine alright so let's go over to the Wireshark and we're gonna use the local area number two and now we're gonna we should be able to see all the traffic coming in and out of the F uh, fast internet one slash one And let's go over to. We already started seeing some traffic, like the EIGRP uh, multicast packets and the spanning tree ones. And let me just. Hey, we're gonna ping again. And there it is. And like if we go over to the internet. So that's pretty cool. Um, and actually, I wanted, I, I really wanted to show you uh, the remote span sessions, and but the again the Ether switch modules wouldn't allow me to do that. Uh, basically, it's the it's pretty straightforward. It's just like a regular span session. But then what you do is that let me just uh, actually actually um, what you do is that you have say two um, two switches and then say your source port is over here this is the port that you want to look at right <laughs> and then you have a trunk link connecting these two switches together and the destination port will be this one right here so this is where you will be sitting at on your computer okay and you have a packet sniffer on this one. So what you do is that on the you create two monitor sessions, one on each port. On, I mean on each switch. And then for this one, you go and assign the source interface as again this port right here, and the destination port. It will be a special VLAN that you will create on both switches. It's called a remote span. Uh, 
well remote spam vlan and then so and then on this one on this switch right here um, your source interface will be the remote VLAN and the as you can imagine the destination port will be or the destination interface will be this port right here so pretty straightforward and so <clears throat> I guess that's all I wanted to show you for today um, one quick recommendation here on the on the GNS3 <clears throat> Try to have all your devices uh, connected to each other before you start up the topology. Um, I could I could bet that you're gonna you're gonna have some troubles on the GNS3. Sometimes it's gonna bug out on you, um, and that could be very annoying. Um, another thing, uh, and you could look this up on Google. Um, a very useful thing to have is uh, every time you click on console um, to have the the telnet sessions brought up to your super putty instead of the regular putty uh, and that way you be able to have all these t cool tabs it's very I mean it's very handy um, and you could look this up on Google again and let me see if you go to preferences and then console applications you should be able to change these values and then create a path to your super putty um, um, so I guess that's it for this video and later on we're gonna I'm gonna try I'm this is what I'm working on right now let me show you real quick that one um, so this is the UNL or the unified networking lab and this is up this is basically a, an Ubuntu virtual machine and let's see uh, oops notes and so if you look at this list these are all the devices that you that you will be able to to configure or to integrate into this uh, UNL, it's pretty cool. This is what um, I'm, I've been working on lately. I have my Palo Alto sitting here, and these are two Juniper routers, and this is uh, a Cisco XRV running Cisco IOS XR, um, and so here I have my in Switch switch one. I have um, the UNL virtual machine which is this one right here or maybe it's gone let me tell that to it real quick oops actually uh, I think it's an SSH connection Yes, so so it's uh, basically an Ubuntu machine, and I guess that's it. Um, again, I hope this will be informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.